Okay, let's get going. All right, so a couple things to do, talk about tonight. This is slightly different stuff, kind of new stuff. Uh, and it's a little bit different than, than what you might have seen before. But we're starting to get into topics like probability and combinations. And by the way, it's a new chapter, chapter 11. Okay, so it's going to be some stuff that maybe is a little bit, a little bit odd. This first stuff I don't think is too tricky. Some of the stuff is a little bit new. Uh, that you might not have seen before, but it's none of it is really hard. It's just you got to learn it. That's kind of the, the main stuff. So some of you might not have seen this, even if you've seen all the other stuff we've done uh, in the class so far. Okay, the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so we have to be able to count efficiently, and what I mean by that is looking at a, a problem that has a number of different ways to count up how many things can occur is the type of thing that we're going to be looking at. Okay, so. Here's just straight off the top, here's an example, okay? Let's say you have two shirts, it's about how many shirts I have here in Djibouti, two shirts, okay? Three pairs of pants, three pairs of pants, slacks, trousers, whatever you want to call them, and two pairs of shoes, two, or is it pair or pair? pair? Two pair of shoes? Anyway, two, two, pair of, two pairs of shoes. Anyway, you have four total shoes. And you can only wear two at a time, and they have to be the same two. OK. The question is, how many outfits can I wear? How many outfits? No, no, not just so, until you get tired. Total. Like, how many total outfits can you wear? This is kind of, in some sense, this is almost like the penny, nickel, dime thing, where you have to enumerate all the different choices that you have. Okay? We're going to do it in a slightly different way, though. Okay? Let's take it this way. Let's say that you can wear shirt number one, or you can wear shirt number two. Right? Actually, you don't need the little arrows. It doesn't really matter. This is just kind of what we call graph notation. Shirt number two. Okay? And if you're wearing shirt number two, you can wear a pair of pants one, two, or three. Pants one, pants two, or pants three. If you're wearing shirt two, you could also wear pants one, pants two, or pants three. So far, so good? Right? Pants one, pants two, or pants three. If you are wearing pants one, you can wear shoe one, pair of shoes one, or pair of shoes two. I'll just abbreviate. Pants two, same thing, shoes one or shoes two. Pants three, shoes one or shoes two. Oops. Pants one down here, shoes one, shoes two, shoes one, shoes two. And finally, shoes one and shoes two. Any other combinations that you can think of? In computer science, we would call this a tree because it kind of looks like a tree with branches and whatever. You'd actually call this the root of the tree. Okay? But anyway, the point is you can, you can go down here and you can look. You can say, OK, this day I want to wear shirt one, pants three, and shoes one. And I end up right here. And that's one combination, like one enumeration of this, right? How many different outfits are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different combinations. Because it's only the end ones that really count, right? Because you got you, this one has lots of different ones, and this one has lots of different ones. This one only has one combination. It's shirt one, pants one, shoes one, right? But there's 12 of them. It's nice. What's nice about this is counting this is actually pretty easy. How many, different, how many different shirts do you have? Two. How many different pants do you have? Three. How many different shoes do you have? Two pairs of shoes, right? Two times three times two. What's two times three? What's, two, what's six times two? 12 different combinations. Pretty easy to figure out once you know that little trick, right? You don't have to draw this all out. Okay. So the fundamental counting principle is just the number of ways in which successive things can be found and you multiply together to get the total number of ways. That's all the fundamental counting pro fundamental counting principle is. Okay? Let's try another one. Anybody still writing the, t the tree down? OK. All right. All right, so let's say you have a car, a model car. 
And this car comes in seven colors and three types of rims. Three types of rims, right? And you can have two different sound systems. Two different sound systems. And that's it. How many ways can you order this? How many different combinations of, of cars can you choose from? Seven times three times two, right? Which is 21 times two? 42 different types of shoes. Or <laughs> shoes, cars. <laughs> Still thinking shoes. 42 is also the answer to life, the universe, and everything. How many of you all know that reference? One, two, a couple people? Yeah, it's, if you've ever read what book? Hitchhiker's the Hitchhiker's Guide, Guide to the Galaxy. That's the big thing about the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is there's an answer to everything in the universe, and it's 42. Like, anyway. Like, not 23, 42. What's the number 23? Oh, then like the movie 23. OK. All right. Here's a slightly different type of problem. OK? Here's a slightly different type of problem. Multiple choice test has 20 questions. 20 questions on the multiple choice test. Each question, each question has four choices. Okay, in other words, A, B, C, or D. Okay? If you answer all 20 questions and you leave none of them blank, how many ways can you answer the question? The questions. Somebody, you, you might say 80 different ways, right? But each question has how many choices? OK? There's four choices per question. The first question you can do four different ways. The second question you can do four different ways. The third question you can do four different ways. Dot, dot, dot. It's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit different, right? Right all the way up to the last question you do 20 times. This is 20 times, 20 times of questions, right? So in this case, it's not 4 times 20, but it's what? 4 raised to the 20th which is actually 1.0995 times 10 to the 12th. 10 to the 12th is a trillion, right? So there's a trillion different ways you can answer all the questions on the, on the quiz, right? So you know, that's, you know that, now that's not saying that you've got a one tri trillionth chance of getting them, all, like getting them right, right? <laughs> I mean, that would be bad, but, but you can you know, do that. I, funny story, when, when I was teaching uh, high school, you know, you know Scantrons? Like the thing, you know, the, the, like the uh, things for SATs and whatever, a little Scantron sheet, and you have to bubble in the answer, right? Well, some, yeah, what, if, you, if you don't know the answer, what do they tell you to guess? C. Right? C, right? So some probably not so smart kid decides he's going to answer like the, I had a quiz and like the last 10 answers he either didn't get to or didn't know how to do. So he's like, oh, I'll be all clever, right? And the last 10 answers, he answers all C. He just bubbles them all in, right? OK. Well, I, I get, get through the Scantron. And when you do the little Scantron, there's a machine you put these things through. And you put them through. And you can, you can pretty much tell how well somebody's doing by how much noise it makes. Because it has to stamp every time it like gets the thing wrong, like, right? So, so you put them in, and it goes, it goes, it goes like this. It goes, his goes like this. Right? And I'm like, what was that? And so I, so I take it out, and I look, right? And the whole last 10 were absolutely wrong. All 10 of them were wrong, right? And turns out the last 10 questions on the quiz were, were true, false. So the only answers were A and B, right? So, so if he had picked A and B, if he had picked A or B, he would have at least gotten a 50-50 chance of getting them all right, you know? But no. So anyway, read the, read the question before you answer it. That's the, the trick to that one. Yeah, I used to listen to other teachers. I'd be in like the teacher's lounge, and I'd listen to all the other teachers grading their scantrons. And you'd be like, ooh, that's pretty bad, because you hear a lot of you know. I've never heard that about picking C. Yeah, well, yeah. Never. You never heard that about picking C? Well, so, so if, you're, if you're a teacher and you know what you're doing, you're not going to, you're going to randomize the types of like answers so that, that little trick doesn't work. And like SATs and all the other big tests you take, 
they're totally random. Like you can, you know, there's exactly the same number of A's, B's, C's, and D's throughout the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's they, they not exact, but they do a really good job of randomizing things. If you have multiple in a row, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine did do that once, where she made a whole test of like 25 questions, all the same answer, like all B's. Oh, that's so all B. Yeah, she said. She said people started shaking and you know whatever. And she's looking at them, they're all looking it over. And uh, anyway, okay. So so the next the next little section, section 11. Point, that was it for counting principle, right? You got to know a couple things on that. 11.2 is what we call permutations. It sounds, it sounds gross according to Nadia. No, these are not gross. These aren't that bad. Permutation is just an ordered arrangement. An ordered arrangement. Ordered arrangement of items. That's an F of items. Okay? That occurs in the following cases. One. When no item is new, no item is used more than once. I'll explain what this means in a minute. No item is used more than once. Okay, and the order makes a difference. The order makes a difference. Now, why do I say that? Well. Let's say I tell you guys, um, I'm going to pick two of you guys, and we're all going to take out the trash today, right? The three of us are going to work together and take out the trash. Does it matter that I pick somebody first and then somebody else? Does the order of the, of the people matter? It's like all three of us, we're all working together to take out the trash, right? So the order doesn't matter. But if I said, to, I said I'm going to pick two people, one of you is going to be in charge, and the other person is going to be the you know subordinate, then the order matters, right? One of you is in charge and one of you is not in charge. And so the, the, the fact that you're that there's that ordering makes a difference. Okay? Let's use another, let's do an example just with letters right now. Okay? So let's say there's three letters. A, B, and C. Alright? Gonna pick A, B, and C. Let's order these in the combinations and things. Well, I got to be careful using the word combination. That's something different. The, let's make a permutation of these letters. Okay? We can do A, B, C. We could do A, C, B. Right? We can do B, A, C. We could also do B, C, A. Or we could do C, A, B, and then C, B, A. Okay? Are those all the different combinations? Yeah, they are. Here's how we use the counting principle to figure them out. Let's say there, there's three combinations or three letters we're talking about here. I'm going to put spaces in terms of the letters. So this is like the first letter, this is the second letter, this is the third letter. If I'm choosing of from A, B, and C, how many different choices do I have? Three choices, right? Now that I've chosen one, let's say I pick A. For the second letter, how many choices do I have? Two. Just two. And then finally, how many choices are left over? One. Just one. Three times two times one, six different ways to do this. Okay? So that's the that's the, the first part about this. Let's say we want to do the same thing, A, B, and C, except that the first letter can be a consonant. In other words, the first letter can't be A. Right? Well, how many different ways can we pick the first letter? Two. two ways. How many different ways can we pick the second letter? Two. Also two, because let's say we pick B. Well, then we can pick between A and C. Or if we pick C, we can pick between B and A. So far, so good? So you've also got two for the second letter. And then how many are left for the third letter? Just one left. So how many different ways can we do this? 4, 2 times 2 times 1. Not so bad, right? OK. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I'm not going to trick you. I'm not going to trick you. OK, I am going to say something that's probably wrong, though. Let's say, how many different ways can we arrange nine soldiers in a squad? 
Is that wrong? Nine soldiers in a squad. There aren't nine soldiers in a squad normally, right? How many are there? I don't even know. Twelve? Twelve, yeah. Let's say we pick nine of them. Right? Yeah, and the army is twelve. Let's say you pick nine of them. How many different ways can we arrange those nine soldiers? For the first soldier? Nine. Second soldier? Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one. Right? Seven, eight, nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. The nice thing is we have a, we have a way of writing this that's nice and simplified. Okay? It's, it's when you start with a number, n, and then you do n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, right? This is called... This is called factorial notation. Factorial notation, OK? And it means, and by the way, this is 362,880 different ways, if you do all that out. All right, that's a lot, OK? And we have this factorial notation. The way we, let me write factorial notation right up here. Factorial notation is, if we have 0 factorial, we just call that 1. It's another one of those special cases. Just call it 1. Generally, you won't have to worry about that. If n is a natural number, which is what? What did we say natural numbers were? 1 through infinity, right? Not negatives. You can't do, you can't do factorials of negative numbers. But if it's a natural number, then it's going to be n factorial. It's just an exclamation point equals n times n minus 1 factorial, which means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And if you look at this notation, you go, ah, oh, that's all crazy. Don't worry about it. Just remember, it's start with the top number, start multiplying all the way down to 1. So, so how do you put this factorial? Good question. Some, some calculators have a factorial button. I'm not sure this one does. Uh, I'm not sure. There may be a factorial button here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure. We could look through the thing. But don't, don't, most of the time, you will not have to calculate it all out. The worst you might have to do is like 10 down. You won't have to do 100 down. That would take all day. Some calculators do have a factorial button. Okay. All right. It may have one of the special ones. Might have a, it might have a special button that does that. I'm not sure. OK. OK, we're, we're about to blow Terrence away with this stuff because he just missed factorial notation. All right. All right. <laughs> you ready? Calculate the following. 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial. What are you going to do? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, that's right. OK. Yeah. What'd you get? What's that? 42. I'm not sure it's 42. Is it 7 times 6? Because on ours, we got the Oh, you know what? It is 42. Yeah. Oh, you do have a factorial button? Yeah. It is 7 times. Yeah. Remember, this is, this is actually in parentheses if you're going to do this all out. OK, well, you're stealing my thunder a little bit. This is 42, which is fine. You're allowed to do that. Again, answer to life, the universe, and everything. OK? So you can calculate that. What if we wanted to calculate 672 factorial divided by 670 factorial? Are you going to want to calculate that all out? 672 <laughs> times 675, 71. Well, on yours, you can. Now, be really careful with that button, because sometimes you're not going to be able to use it for things that we'll see later, but that's OK. Oh, just like this problem. No, this one you can use it. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? On this one, you can't do it, because this is too big a number. That's a super huge number. Question. Hold on. Well, this is my understanding of how to do that. And correct me if I'm wrong. If you got 672 permutations, over 670, can't you just factorial over 670? Yep. Yes. Seven. Can't you just multiply 672 times 671. You can. Watch what happens. 
Okay, everybody's got to watch this, because if you don't do this, you'll be typing in your calculator forever. This is 672 times 671 times 670 times 669, dot, 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 all the way to 1, right? This is 670 times 669 times 668, dot, 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 dot all the way to 1. Notice something about this. And this is exactly what Roland was talking about. There's a 670 on the top and a 670 on the bottom. They cancel each other out. There's a 669 on the top and a 669 on the bottom. Cancel each other out. There is a 668 up there too. Cancel that all the way down to 1. So all you have to do is 672 times 671, which is exactly what these guys did up here, right? Instead of doing it a lot, because the same thing here. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 all cancels out. Those all cancel. And it's just 7 times 6. So what's the point? Okay. What's the point of what? <laughs> ah, good question. So, so Dave sn snarkily asked, what's the point? The, the point is when we're, count, when we're doing some counting, we are, we're going to have some formulas that involve permutations, and you're going to have to know how to uh, manipulate them. But you'll see. You'll see when they come up. So then we would just multiply the 672 by the 671? Yeah, try it. Well, try it for the top. You, you did it for the top, right? You said 7 push the little fancy factorial button divided by 6 fancy factorial button. And you got 42. The other people who are using like other calculators just type 7 times 6 and also got 42. So I got yeah. 450,912. Uh, yeah, 450,912. 450,912. That's your answer for that one. Not so bad. OK? All right. So let's go back one sec. OK? Let's not go back, but let's, let's see where this factorial stuff might come into play so Dave doesn't think we're crazy. OK? How many ways can you arrange three books on a shelf from a pile of five books? Let's say you've got five books, OK? And you only have room on your shelf for three of them. Three books on the shelf. Okay. Well, for the three books. Okay. Right. For the first book, how many choices do you have? Five. Oops. You have five. For the second book, how many choices do you have? Four. Four. For the third book? Three. three. So that gives you 20 times three is? 60 times. So that's one way to think about it. But there's another, oops, there's another way to think about this as well. Okay? If you have, this is actually 5, time by four, ti five times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1. Okay? Well, there's two books left over, basically. Okay? So this is the way this actually works. What you can do is you can rewrite this as 5 factorial over 2 factorial, which is just 5 factorial, or sorry, 5 minus 3 factorial. Okay. This form, the reason I wrote it like that instead of just writing 2, is because we were given 5 and 3, and they both show up in this little formula thing. Okay. This is called the permutation formula. Okay, and here's how it goes. The number, oops, the number, the number of permutations of n items, n items taken, taken, are at a time. Okay, is this. And I'm going to write it right here because I ran out of space in the bottom. This is what it is right up here. Okay, We write it like this. We write a little n, then we write a big P, then we write a little r, equals, put an equals in there, equals n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Everybody got that? N P R permutation, an ordered combination, n factorial divided by n minus r 
factorial. Okay. Erase the rest of this. What the rest of what? This? Oh, it's definition, sorry. Uh, oh, you got it? Okay, the number of permutations of n items taken r at a time. n items taken r at a time. Okay? So, let's say you have a club. There's 17 members. 17 members of the club. Okay? And you want to pick a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. President, vice president, and treasurer. Okay, you want to pick those three positions. Does the order matter once they're picked? Like, is one guy a different position than the other guy or gal? Right? Sure. The president's a different position than the vice president. It's a different position than the treasurer. So the order of these actually matters. Okay? We have n members and r positions, n being 17, r being 3. Okay? So what we would write is 17 p. 3. That's the permutation of 17 items taken 3 at a time. And now we have a formula for this. 17 factorial divided by 17 minus 3 factorial. Okay. When you're calculating this out, this is actually pretty easy. It's 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 dot dot dot. And it's also, down here, it's 14 times 13 times 12, dot, dot, dot. You cancel everything 14 and below out, and it's just 17 times 16 times 15. Right? That is how you figure out 17 people taken three at a time, or 17 items taken three at a time. Any guesses off the top of your head without doing it in your calculator? Roughly? Yeah, you say, you say, so we would do what? We multiply what now? You, OK, you get this far. Right. You put it in the formula. 17 choose 17 permutation 3. 17 factorial over 17 minus 3 factorial, right? right. OK. So that means 17 factorial over 14 factorial, because 17 minus 3 is 14. Got it. So you can either do on your calculator 17 factorial symbol divided by 14 factorial symbol. You're done. Or you should know that it's 17 times 16 times 15 times 14, all the way down to 1, divided by 14 times 13 times 12, all the way to 1. And all the ones from 14 below actually cancel out. So it's just 17 times 16 times 15. Okay. All right. Happens to be 4,080 different ways. A lot of different ways to pick those three positions. Right. OK. On the homework, you'll have some of the following things that I show you, but you won't have any on the final. I'll tell you that right now. But I've got to show you so you can do the homework. Okay. Let's say we had a, a word like moon, okay. M-O-O-N, right? How many different ways can we arrange those letters? Well, do the O's matter? Like, is one O any different than the other O? It's not like we label them. We don't say like O1 and O2, right? If there's an O is an O, right? We could do, we could do moon like this. We could do O M O N. We could do that. We could do N M O O, et cetera, et cetera. We could write down all these different combinations. Okay? If they if there weren't if the O's weren't dis like if the O's were distinct, in other words, it was M O A N or something like that, right? It would be a, there would be 24 different combinations. Why? Because it's four letters permutation four times, right? Which should be what? Four factorial divided by four minus four factorial, which is four times three times two times one divided by what's zero factorial? What did we say that was? 1, so it's not 0, so it's just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 12 times 2 is 24 different ways. As it turns out, because there's this extra letter, that means that there's two different combinations that you can't, turn different permutations you can't do, because there's only half as many choices, actually. So what you do is the following. OK? 
Okay? What you do, it's going to be if there are however many identical items there are. So in this case, there's two identical items. Just divide by another 2 factorial out of this. So this becomes, instead of this, it becomes 4 factorial divided by 4 minus 4 factorial times 2 factorial. Because there's two repeated letters, so you divide by 2 factorial more. So if there's 3 or 4 repeated letters, that would change to 3 or 4? Yeah, let's see if we can, let's see if we can do one. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Let's see how many different repeats there are. M doesn't repeat. I repeats how many times? One, two, three, four. So there's four I's. S is one, two, three, four. Four S's. P's. Two P's. Anybody else repeating? OK, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven letters. So it's going to be 11 factorial. And we're going to take it, let's say we take all the letters at a time. 11 minus 11 factorial times 4 factorial times 4 factorial for the s's times 2 factorial for the p's. And you'd have to do that number. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not going to ask you this on a test, but you will have to do it for your homework. So remember how to at least do that for the homework itself. Okay. Any questions on that stuff so far? I won't erase it yet. By the way, while people are still writing this down, go to your fancy formula sheet and guess what? Look down under probability and counting rules. What do you see? Permutation rule. It's right there. OK, so you don't have to memorize this one. Okay. Tony, what's wrong? What's up? I'm low back here. What are you lost on? OK, yeah, let, let, let's, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not lost on this stuff. All right, let's pick, a, let's, let's pick another one. Let's just, let's just do one more example of this stuff. This isn't that bad. Let's do one more example of this stuff. Um, give me a word that has at least one repeated letter in it. No, that's too long. <laughs> Kansas. Kansas is a good one. K-A-N-S-A-S. Good one. Maybe we'll pick a different state. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do Kansas, then we'll pick a different state. We'll pick a nice state where uh, Hawaii or something. OK, so for Kansas, all right, if we want to find out how many different ways we can rearrange, let's say we, can, we want to rearrange um, five of the letters instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. If we just want to arrange five letters, we're going to have we're going to have one, there's six total. 6P5 divided by how many repeats are there? There's two repeats. There's two A's and there's two S's. So it's going to be also divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Right? So this, what, what's wrong, Tony? You just have to memorize this now. I'm, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> this, and again, this, this one will not be on the on the exam. But oh, this, yeah, go ahead. And here's my question. Yeah. OK, so whatever double you put it on the bottom, it's factorial. Yes. There's OK. Yeah, as, right. as many times. That's all. OK. All right. Want me to continue doing this? OK, I'll continue doing this. This becomes 6, choose, six permutation 5 is 6 factorial divided by 6 minus 5 factorial. And you're also going to divide by these two, which happens to end up on the bottom here. 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And that's all. I don't think they're going to want the answers like this. I think they're going to want the actual number. Yeah, I believe they're going to want the actual number. OK. By the way, these things should always come out an, even, an actual number, not or a, a natural number. They shouldn't come out as fractions and things. <laughs> Just because of the ways it works. Because the way you can't make a fraction of a permutation, right? Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. It's on the video. Or you can look, actually, it's on the notes that I post online. Right. No internet? You have to. You're doing your homework. All right. 
The next section is not on permutations, but a word I, I goofed on and said earlier, combinations. Okay. Combinations are the same idea, except that the order doesn't matter now. Okay, the actual order itself doesn't actually matter at all. Okay, so let's say you have three people: Alice, uh, Bill, Charlie. What's going to be next? <laughs> How about Donna? And then Edgar, A, B, C, D, E, right? So you've got, these, you've got these people. They are in some club, and they want to make a committee that's going to run like the charity or something, right? So they, we want a three-member committee. How is this different than the president, vice president, treasurer one? Because it doesn't matter if there's no, if nobody's in charge of it, right? And there's no like ordering, you're the president or you're the vice president. You're just on the committee. Everybody's on the committee, right? So in this case, what we need to do is we need to realize that a committee with A, B, and C is the same as a committee with C, B, and A, and also the same as a committee with C, A, and B, right? Or B, A, and C, and all, all, the, all the different combinations, right? Or even what, C, B, and A. All those are the same combination, because the order doesn't matter anymore. OK, did I repeat something? Is there, any, is there one I missed? There must have been B, C, A, B, C, A, and also A, C, B. Yeah, all those are the same, same committee, right? What we do is we find the number of permutations like before, and then we divide by the number of arrangements we're trying to make. In other words, the three again, right? So it's going to be in this case like this. We're trying to take five members like this, or five, five, a committee of five people, right? Or a committee of three people out of these five. Can okay, we do it like this? Okay? We do five permutation three divided by three permutation three. Okay? Because the three permutation three is just saying, let's get rid of all those extras that we've all that we've overcounted. Okay, we've overcounted these, which is the same as three per permutation three is just this, right? It's three factorial divided by three minus three factorial, which is always just what? Well, this bottom is one, so it's always going to be three factorial. So it's the, what we're dividing by is just the factorial of that top number there. Okay, so this ends up becoming five factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. It's a lot like the repeats from before, okay? the repeated letters from before. Okay. It turns out to be 10 when you do this out, 10 different combinations. Okay. What we do is we write this very in very similar way to this. Okay, I'll actually write it over here. We write we write n choose r. The c, in this case, combination or choose. You can either say it either way. Equals n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. Okay? You might see it written slightly different. You might see it just written like this, n and r inside of parentheses, like above each other, but no like dividing line. You might see it like that. Okay? Might see it that way. Okay? All right. I guess I'm confused on how the two are different. How which two are different? Like the permutations and the combinations part. Because, I mean, this seems like the first, the first one that you did. It does, except that there's an extra little three factorial here. It's kind of like the extra letters one. It is like that. But the extra letters was just kind of a, an odd way, of, like an extra part of permutations. This one is where you've got, you've got this group that you're choosing, and the order just doesn't matter anymore at all. 
for any of the any of the choices. Okay, before it mattered for some of the choices, but this kind only matters for doesn't matter for any of the choices. Okay, let's do an example. Um, you guys have been to you guys have been to Baskin Robbins. How many different flavors do they have? Thirty-one, right? Let me stand back here. Thirty-one flavors. Thirty-one flavors. I I haven't been there, but I've been there in a while. Yeah. Okay, what did they merge with? Something else. Is that it? Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. Not a big fan of Dunkin' Donuts. Although, pumpkin muffins, ah, oh, I'm going to drool, drool over pumpkin muffins. Okay, Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. How many ways can you prepare three scoop ice cream? Three scoops. How many different ways with all those distinct flavors? In other words, you can't do two of the same flavor. So you've got to pick three total, three different flavors. I once went to a place in uh, Vancouver, Canada that had like 280 flavors of ice cream. Like garlic, what? like yeah, jalapeno that. pepper. They have a place like that. Yeah. Uh, do they really? Port of Mouth, oh, okay. All right, so how many different ways can you make three scoops? Well, do the scoop, and let's say the scoop order doesn't matter. Actually, sorry, the scoop order does matter. No, wait, is this not, doesn't matter? No, sorry. Scoop order does not matter in this case. Okay, how many different flavors can you make? Or how many different scoops can you make? 31. Choose, yeah, three scoops. See, choose three gives you 31 factorial divided by 31 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. Okay? What this ends up being is 31 times 30 times 29 times 28, dot, 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 divided by, this is 28, so it's 28 times 27 times 26, dot, 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 right? Times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, guess what? Which ones cancel out? The 28 to 26, not the 3, 2, 1 in this one. And the 28's up here. So you end up with 31 times 30 times 29 divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which gives you, in this case, 4,495 different ways of making that out of 31 flavors. So, Question. So when we do these, right, can you always do them in your calculator? Yeah, if you have a calculator that can do them, you can do them in your calculator. The, your cal these calculators actually, I think, do have a combination button on them. These ones do anyway. I, I think the other ones probably do too. You got to find it maybe in the instructions. I think it's under, I think it's under PRB. Yeah. On these ones, I think it's PRB. Like, let's do uh, yeah, PRB. Yep, it is actually. So if you do 31 PRB, 31 PRB, and then you choose the NCR one for this one, choose that and hit. Oh, you know what? It's also got a little It's got a little uh, factorial on there too. Yeah. Okay. And then you choose the NCR, and then you choose hit three. It should give you 4,495. So, how did you do that again? Okay. You do the following. You do 31, and then there's a little button PRB. Yep. Then you hit PRB, and then you select the NCR. You move the little arrow keys. Hit enter, and then hit three. Four four nine five. It says answer NCR. That, that did bypass a lot of math. 31 PRB, oops. 31 PRB, choose NCR, 3. And it says 4495. Okay? All right, so you can do that. I, I'm quite happy for you to do that. Okay? Although sometimes I may ask you to simplify this first into this form. I mean, you can't use your calculator to simplify. I mean, once you get it, you can retype, you can type it in. But it's fine with me. Fine with me. Okay. All right. Now that we know these, and by the way, that's also on your formula sheet. Go ahead and check. It should be there. Okay. Should be there. Okay. All right. Question. Anybody play poker in here? Yes. Yeah. How many different seven-card hands can be dealt from a standard deck? Seven card hands. How many, how many cards are in a standard deck? 52. From 52 distinct cards. Okay, how many? Seven card hands from a 52 card deck. 
does the order matter? You look at your, you, you reorder them in your hand. The order doesn't matter. So it's simply 52 choose 7. Or 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 7 factorial times 7 factorial, which is what? 133,784,560. So you want, you want something that will blow your, blow your mind away? OK, so this is a lot of cards. This is a lot of different ways to deal seven cards from your deck, right? If you shuffle, you get a brand new pack of cards. OK? Hang on, still figuring this out. Good. All right. Sorry? Yeah. There you go. OK. So, so you have a standard deck of cards, 52 cards. And when you get it, it's all in the right order, right? It goes ace down to two in the uh, spades, then it does hearts, then it does diamonds, then it does clubs, or whatever. Well, if you go and shuffle that deck, like do a real good shuffle on it, and then put it down on the table, the odds are that the order that that deck is in right now has never been in the same order in any deck in the entire history of the world. Because there are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of, combina of ways to order a deck of cards that you can't actually, like you, the odds of you shuffling and making some other shuffle that somebody else has one, at one time in the world made is almost zero. Like almost zero. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's only 52 cards. 52 choose 52 is how much? I don't even know if your calculators can do this. 52 factorial divided by 52 minus 52 factorial. Whoops, you know what? That's, that's not what it is. Sorry. No. <laughs> 52 factorial, 52 combinations. 52. Yeah, how many different ways can you make? All of them, right? So, and, and this one is how many? Let's see. What's that? 52 times 4? No, no. No, no. This, what does this mean? What does 52 combination 52 mean? That means how many different ways, ah, right. How many different ways can you make 52? Right. How many different ways can you make 52 cards when the order doesn't matter? Well, one, right, out of 52. Because there's only one deck. The order doesn't matter. That, that'll do it, right? If the order did matter, this is what I meant to say. Yeah, it'd be the, the permutation. Try to do that. What's 10 to the, what do you mean, times 10 to the? Yeah, what is it, 8 point what? Point zero six five eight round, round, 8.07 times 10 to the 67. 67th power, right? That's a huge, 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 huge number. Huge, right? And so, you know, you won't, you won't be able to get the same order most of the time, OK? All right, another card question. We're going we're gonna to do a few more with decks of cards because they happen to be, they lend themselves easily to these kinds of problems. Suppose you play with one suit of 13 cards. So now you don't have 52 cards anymore. You just have one suit of 13 cards. OK, there's 13 cards in one suit. And how many four-hand cards are there? Four-hand card. How many four-hand, four-card hands? Sorry, four-card hands are there? Four card hands? 13 choose 4. 13 factorial. I'll keep writing this down even though now you all know how to use your calculator to do this. 13 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. If you do that out in your calculator or your whatever you get, 715 different hands. Okay. Yeah, that PRB button is a pretty good one. OK, all right, let's take a break. Come back at 5 after. No, yeah, let's see. Yeah, 5 after is good.